What's going on ladies and gentlemen, Manny here, hope you're doing fine. A while ago I finished what I can confidently call my most successful hangboard training experiment so far. Why most successful? Because I pushed certain numbers significantly more than with any other experiment I did so far and the gains seem to carry over nicely to the outdoors, which is my focus as you know, so I'm very happy. Recently I've been investing some of that fitness into limit projecting with some success, so I thought it's about time to share a condensed report here on the main channel as well as it might be helpful to some of you too. If you're interested in all details and tighter training updates I recommend checking out the Patreon tribe where I documented the experiment in great detail. The experiment evolved around assisted one arm pull ups on edges. Why? I had already trained them in the past with subjectively good results but I never tracked them objectively which is something I emphasized and learned during my Emil method experiment. I wanted to apply these methods to assisted one armers and see how certain numbers develop. The gear necessary for imitating this experiment is a Beastmaker 2000 hangboard or any other board with some edges to be honest and a pulley system. I'm using the orange pencil thing. I'll try to link it down below and some weights for assistance or bonus if you're a formidable forearm soldier already. Here's the session protocol I used. It's 30 one armor attempts, 10 on the middle edge half crimp, which is around 23 millimeters, I believe, then 10 on the 14 millimeter half crimp, and 10 on the middle edge three finger drag. Always 5 left, 5 right, alternating hands. The timing is very strict, which keeps the whole session under an hour. Successful attempt means I got my nose to the edge I was pulling, anything below that was counted as unsuccessful. If an attempt was successful, I would decrease my assisting weight for the next attempt, making the lift harder. And if an attempt was unsuccessful, I would try the same assisting weight for same difficulty or even increase assisting weight, making my next attempt easier. The goal of each session was to score or successful lifts with as little assisting weight as possible, especially during attempts 4 and 5 of each side and category, which I recorded for analysis later on. The idea was to migrate to Mountain Gorilla forearm land where I would always break or at least match records of previous sessions to draw a nice progression graph and some interesting, hopefully ego pushing conclusions in the end. The recorded session numbers were the first way of tracking this experiment, the second was pre and post experiment assessment sessions, which I made good experiences with tracking the email method. You can see the protocol I used for this experiment here, it's a fixed sequence of test hangs and pull ups on various holds and grips with various bonus weights, aiming to pick up finger and upper body strength gains or losses by comparing max hang time or max pull up count pre versus post experiment. We will go over the records of individual and assessment sessions in a second in the results part of the video. Again, if you're curious how I came up with these protocols, the process is documented on the tribe. When it comes to frequency, the goal was two sessions per week on average, but I ended up with a bit above one session per week on average for various reasons. The planned experiment duration was one month, but I ended up with two months for various reasons. The hangboard sessions were not the only training I was doing during that experiment, just to give you the complete picture. Over the two months experiment duration I did, apart from 10 one armor hangboard sessions and two assessment hangboard sessions, also eight home wall bouldering sessions and 12 outdoor lead climbing sessions, which had priority like almost always when it comes to my training. Here's a timeline of all 12 hangboard sessions. As you can see, they were not executed in homogeneous frequency. Sometimes they were short, sometimes quite long breaks between sessions. Now you know what I did, let's look at the results. Starting with the numbers, I recorded each session. From the two recorded lifts of each category and side, I took the best successful value or the worst unsuccessful value if both lifts were unsuccessful, which happened on a rare occasion, to get an impression of how strong or respectively how weak I was during that session. I multiplied these by 1.3 to factor in the friction of my pulley system and subtracted that from the training weight I had during that session to arrive at the actual amount of kilograms I was lifting or failing on. I used these numbers to plot progression graphs of the categories and sides, starting with the four fingers half crimp Beastmaker 2000 middle edge, one graph left hand, one right hand, the higher numbers right, demonstrating that my right hand is significantly stronger on that lift throughout the whole experiment. We see a first drop in session 4, then a longer break and then a significant second wind with the strongest sessions 7 and 8. 
When bringing in training weight, we can see that as my strength went up and my training weight dropped slightly, at some point the lifted kilograms crossed my training weight. And consequently that's when I was able to pull an unassisted one armor on that lift. First with right in session 3 and later with left in session 8, a definite lifetime record only possible in that session during this experiment. I'll share more stats on screen to not lose too much time. Bringing in the Beastmaker 2014mm half crimp performance, we see a similar pattern but significantly lower numbers than on the middle edge. This edge is smaller, the lifts are harder, I never crossed my training weight here, so no unassisted one armors, no glory. However, significant improvements. Starting off with quite a strength difference between left and right, but then left hand catching up and in one session, session 6, even exceeding right hand, that's worth the discussion later on I would say. Let's look at the Beastmaker 2000 middle edge 3 finger drag performance. We see lower numbers than the middle edge half crimp, indicating that my 3 finger drag is weaker than my half crimp. However, this is the grip which made the biggest improvements throughout the experiment. Although it took off from even lower numbers than the 14mm half crimp, I managed to hit my training weight with right hand in session 8 and consequently got my first ever unassisted 3 finger drag one armor on the middle edge done with right, another lifetime PR. I did not get that far with left unfortunately due to the usual left right strength difference which displays very clearly on the three finger drag middle edge as well similar to the half crimp middle edge. As you can see the amount of left right strength imbalance is not equal across all grip types. It is most prominent on the middle edge half crimp with differences of up to 4 kilograms and smallest on the 14 millimeter half crimp where left and right are almost equally strong especially towards the end of the experiment. I calculate calculated means of all left and right hand performances, from this we can see that my overall imbalance throughout the experiment is relatively constant at around 2 kilograms. This was part 1 of the results, that is the numbers I noted during the sessions. Part 2 is the test tanks and pull ups of the pre and post experiment assessment sessions. These are interesting as well, as some of them give a perspective also on the previous Emil method experiment, which I tracked similarly. I won't go over all the individual hangs now because that's a lot actually. Instead, I'll show you the protocol again with max hang time and newly introduced max pull up count results of the test lifts of the pre and post experiment sessions, as well as the post Emil method session if available. And comparable. Significant gains occurred in almost all four fingers half crimp tests in hang time as well as pull up count. Most notable and important to me are the middle edge one arm hang, the 14 mm normal hang with bonus weight as well as pull ups and especially interesting the 6 mm micro hang, definitely worth the discussion as well. The three finger drag section looks less impressive, significant gains across most pull up tests but losses in 2 cm radius edge hang time and the vicious 1 cm centimeter radius edge. Interesting as well, let's start discussing. Overall, I'm very happy with the experiment. The gains are obvious not only on paper but also while actually climbing. They allowed some good results recently, especially in the very overhanging terrain of recent projects. So yeah, I'm very happy with that. It kind of confirms what I've felt in the past when training assisted one armors. For me, this is one of the, if not the most effective way of hangboarding. How was the process? Definitely less effort than the Emil method, for example. Training once per week on average versus 14 times per week on the tight schedule makes a huge difference in executability in my opinion. I'm actually a bit surprised that the low frequency still yielded very good results given that I was not even very consequent at, at, at that low frequency and in the past I mostly hangboarded two times per week thinking that's the minimum necessary to improve significantly. Looks like I debunked myself here a little bit. Does that mean the intensity is low? Not at all. To potential imitators I'd recommend to be careful. In fact one of the first longer breaks in my timeline happened after doing two sessions close together right out the gates with only one rest day in between and I could feel my elbows in the tennis region quite strongly after that so I had to take it easier for a while. So it is injury prone for me personally in the elbows as it seems but I guess for most people also in shoulders and fingers therefore only recommend 
recommended for advanced climbers who already have some adaptation in their joints and tendons to the sport and who have decent experience with hangboarding already. To quantify that somewhat, I would estimate that if you are more than 30% body weight away from a Beastmaker 2000 Middle Edge One Armor, you should probably do other training instead to get more adaptation to the sport, for example two-handed weighted dead hangs and pull-ups on edges for example, it will make things more practical as well because you won't have to handle ridiculous amounts of assisting weight all the time if you're already a bit stronger. Maybe you've noticed I'm not mentioning one armors on a bar here, I think those are relatively useless for rock climbing performance, it's a cool move to impress friends but it doesn't really correlate with grades in my experience. A couple of words regarding the results, left right imbalance is greatest on the middle edge half crimp and almost non-existent on the 14mm half crimp, could be because of weaker one arm upper body power left showing through as holds get better and fingers are no limiting factor anymore, but I think this is not the case because I know from former times when I was still training one armers on a bar myself, uh, left was always stronger on a bar naturally for some reasons. Yeah? Another explanation would be that finger strength is still a factor but must be separated in first knuckle and second knuckle strength so to speak. On the first knuckle left and right are somewhat equal in strength but on the second knuckle right is significantly stronger hence greater performance difference on the middle edge. Yet another explanation could be the different gripping I used for left on the 14mm edge. Soon after starting the experiment I realized I could get better numbers if I put my pinky to the rounding. I tried it with right too, but it didn't work. Here I'm stronger with the index in the rounding, at least on the 14mm edge, like when grabbing the middle edge half crimp. I suppose it has something to do with finger or forearm anatomy or recruitment, anyway maybe that had an impact on why left and right are closer together on the 14mm half crimp. On the 3 finger drag middle edge I got the best numbers with both sides when having the ring finger in the rounding by the way. Talking about the 3 finger drag, why did it gain the most? I think my 3 finger drag is my least used grip, hence the least trained grip, hence the grip with the most potential when actually trained. I talked about that as well in connection with the past repeaters experiment, that is interesting also in connection with the assessment session results which we will discuss in a second. When looking at the timeline we can see clearly that there's two peaks. The first comes after the very steep progression in the beginning after around 3 weeks. The second one comes after around 4 more weeks and is less prominent than the first one. This raises the question, why did I not stop the experiment after peak 1? Session number 4 could have been a clear signal. I could have hopped off, do the post assessment, smash out some probably impressive numbers cause there were massive gains in a short time already, rest and start again later. The only answer I have for that is, how could I know? How could I know that the next session would not be better again? You never know of course and that's why it can be a good strategy to set yourself a limit as to when you will discontinue. I could have said, I stop when I don't break my records anymore, period. In hindsight, maybe it would have been a good strategy and to be honest, looking at this chart, this is probably how I will handle it in the future. Well, in the end, that's basically what I did anyway, I did a long break and went for another smaller peak afterwards. I feel like I could have kept the experiment a lot shorter and spicier had I stopped after the first peak. I guess the moral of the story is that you should have a discontinuation strategy to not get stuck in a plateauing system. So let's discuss the second part of the results which is the pre and post assessment sessions. From trying and documenting the email method I learned how useful assessment sessions can be to evaluate progress. To serve this purpose assessments must fulfill a couple of criteria though. During the one armor experiment some of these went down rather imperfect and I want to point this out before discussing the numbers. The pre-assessment was only done after the experiment already started because I had to test the freshly designed one armor routine once before starting, session 0 in the graph that is. The post assessment was done a little late as well, lots of outdoor projecting and other stuff got in the way. This as well as the late pre-assessment quenches changes a bit of course because not all gains or losses could be picked up properly. 
and I was lighter during the post assessment, almost two kilograms, which of course amplifies actual changes. But what is worth more here, whether these effects cancel each other out or not, I leave that up to you to decide. Middle edge one arm hangs went from 1.5 to 4.5 seconds left plus 300%, 6 to 7 seconds right plus 15%. Apparently my left broke through a bigger resistance there, that's cool to see. Generally these gains are not surprising seeing as this is exactly what I trained here, lock of strength combined with finger strength, right? Interestingly gains came also after the Emil method break, although I did basically zero hangboarding during that period apart from the one routine test session zero. Zero. Was that already enough to add 2.5 seconds to this hang for right? Possible. 14 millimeters edge plus 15 kilograms bonus weight went from 31 to 37 seconds plus 20 percent massive improvements on just a static hang this goes to show that with assisted one armors you train everything in the chain shoulders upper arms and fingers because you could assume that a more dead hang style test would not improve as much as a pull-up test from just one armors right but because we're doing them on edges fingers are challenged as well raises the question why even train that hangs which only hit fingers when you can get results on all fronts with one armors well as i said previously the one armors are injury provoking in more areas as well so you gotta be solid in all areas and already quite fit i think that hangs can still be useful to work yourself up to that 14 mm pull-ups plus 15 kg bonus weight went from 5 to 7 plus 40% big gains obviously upper body power. Big bonus weights put training weight differences of the assessments into perspective by the way. Let's look at that quickly. 64 plus 15 is 79 kg, 2 kg of 79 kg me plus bonus is around 2.5% can't really be made responsible for 40% of gains. Then something interesting, 6mm static hang jumped up again after a drop after the Emil method. I think here we see the skin building effect again, which I was going for by doing small edge cooldown pull-ups at the end of each one armor session. Stuff I learned from the Emil method basically put into practice. Moving on to the three finger drag, almost all pull up tests improved, one stayed the same, here we see upper body gains again, yet hang time decreased on some hangs or stayed the same on others. Here we see the skin effect again in my opinion, my fingertip skin was definitely harder after this experiment so I had trouble grabbing those friction dependent round edges of mine. In the future I will have to test three finger drags on normal edges, the 14 millimeters for example as well, to exclude the skin factor a bit more because I know that I actually got stronger on the three finger drag as well from the one armor sessions records right so we see yet again how powerful the skin factor is it can make these gains pretty much invisible so here's some conclusions if I'm fit and I have no injuries I think there's hardly a more effective way for me personally to train on a hangboard than assisted one arm pull-ups it trains all the important links of the pulling chain shoulders upper arms and fingers despite Despite a possibly still successful low training frequency, these sessions are intense, so be injury free and an already advanced climber if you try this yourself. Some corrective pushing exercises on the side might be a good idea as well. Have an exit strategy, something like ok, if I don't break my records anymore, I'll stop. And then migrate to Mountain Gorilla Forearm Land, of course. That's it for this episode, my friends. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you're interested in more details and tighter training updates, check out the Patreon tribe. Thanks for watching this to the very end and stay strong and healthy. I'll see you soon. Bye.